The Ethereum 2.0 merge is one of the most hotly anticipated events in the entire crypto space for 2022. This is when Ethereum switches to the long-awaited proof of stake to where ETH becomes a yield-bearing asset and also likely deflationary. Some experts in this space like Arthur Hayes think this is a huge catalyst for ETH that could push the price north of $10,000 per coin inside of 2022, even despite the recent bearish price action that we've seen lately. But when exactly is this going to get here? What can you expect after the network upgrade? You know, is this, this going to fix ETH's gas fees? Is ETH going to become deflationary? Are you going to get free coins? Well, that's what I'm going to answer in this video. I'm going to talk about all this as a blockchain developer who works with the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into everything that you need to know about the E2.0 merge coming up. So just a quick recap, like what is the merge? What is E2.0? So first of all, you know, ETH 2.0 is the final vision for Ethereum 2.0 ever since it started. So if you're using Ethereum 1.0 today, you're kind of using a prototype of Ethereum. That's when people complain about the gas fees, all this type of stuff, right? So if you've been trading tokens, you've been holding, you know, ETH, you've been, you know, doing transactions on OpenSea, holding NFTs, then you're using Ethereum 1.0 today. But Ethereum 2.0 is getting built right now. It's live. You can actually send Ether to it to stake it. It's got proof of stake turned on. But later, we're going to merge Ethereum 2.0 back into Ethereum 1.0. And the entire blockchain is just going to be one where ETH becomes a staking asset. You know, it's going to be yield bearing. It's likely going to be deflationary. We're going to detail all that in this video, but it's a huge catalyst coming up. So when's it going to arrive? Well, lots of people have been talking about the merge happening in Q2 of 2022. So that would be by June of this year. And last month, I made a video talking about, hey, I didn't think that was going to happen at all. I try to be very realistic about this. That I think it'd likely be the next quarter. And within a few weeks after posting that video, we've seen lots of other news outlets take the same approach based on some conversations we've seen by core developers uh, on Twitter. So, the you know, the Ethereum takes... Yeah, we're seeing this in, like, Time Magazine, like, cited this tweet from Tim Bako here, who's a part of the Ethereum core team, saying it's not going to be in June, but likely will be the few months after. No firm day yet, but we're definitely in the final chapter of proof of work on Ethereum or the final chapter before we merge for Ethereum 2.0. So what Tim's here is validating exactly what I said in my last video about this. And it looks like his timeline for, you know, a couple months after, probably in Q3 of 2022, is a lot like the prediction that I made in that last video. So a couple perspectives on this. What I'm going to say is basically, let's just keep our expectations inside of 2022, just so there's some wiggle room on this, because it's definitely going to be well worth the wait, even if it doesn't ship exactly when you think it's going to. And also the other perspective is a lot of people talk about this as being a delay. All right. And really, this is a delay in expectations. But at the same time, like nobody ever officially advertised a Q2 merge date that kind of just evolved throughout the community so if nobody's advertising a q2 merge date there's no real delay here in the first place all right so this is definitely going to be well worth the wait like i was just saying for a few reasons because there's a lot to look forward to number one eth is likely going to be a deflationary asset okay we're gonna have staking rewards on eth which makes it a yield bearing asset with some pretty high aprs and also it's going to be a huge vote of confidence for the entire ethereum ecosystem because eth will actually set out to accomplish what it said it was going to and so now let's talk about how the merge could be really bullish for the Ethereum price, okay? Because analysts like Arthur Hayes are talking about, you know, the merge being a huge catalyst that could very well send ETH trading north of $10,000 per coin uh, inside of 2022, regardless of the bearish price action that we've seen over the past several months. And so just a quick recap, if you're not familiar with who Arthur Hayes is, you know, he is the co-founder of BitMEX. He's been in this space for a really long time, has historically made a lot of really significant calls. And basically, when he speaks, we listen, right? So, you know, he put out this article talking about ETH trade north of $10,000 per coin and exactly why. Counter that, he also followed up with the post talking about, hey, it's a trap and everything's going to, you know, fall in price. But I think you can think about those as two different perspectives, one being the short-term price and one being the long-term. So I don't think anything's changed in terms of his long-term predictions here. So one of the biggest catalysts that he sees is the merge for the actual Ethereum price or Ether price itself is the fact that ETH becomes a yield-bearing asset through a few different means and how that, that you know, uh, yield can be very attractive and can actually lead to the financialization of ETH, the asset itself. So I highly recommend actually go reading the entire article because Arthur's a great writer or whoever he's got helping him write these articles. And he talks about the incentives in play that are the current financial industry and how they're kind of broken. 
but how like what we have with the Ethereum network after the merge and this yield bearing assets can actually incentivize people who are in the traditional financial space now to offer you know, ETH staking yields as a financial product within their industry. And that can attract a lot of outside money into the space, which if you think about what makes cryptocurrency prices go up in the first place, well, they're supply and demand markets, okay? And if they have a sound economic supply and you give lots of people reasons to hold the asset itself, you know, hint, hint, generating yield, and then selling that as a product to lots of other people, that that increases demand dramatically. And when you increase the demand dramatically and the supply is fixed or it's decreasing because it is likely going to become deflation in the future, that that's going to have a massive positive price impact on the coin. And so here's the big reason for that demand increase is that people who hold ETH, of course, they can get positive price appreciation for the Ether asset itself. But then also they can get passive income rewards of about 8 to 11.5% just for holding the ETH. Now, you might be saying like, hey, I thought ETH was supposed to give you like 3 to 5% or something like that for holding it. You see these numbers advertised around like on cryptocurrency exchanges, stuff like that. What well, actually could be a lot higher than that. And you have to understand technically what's happening behind the scenes in order to account for this. So let me just explain. So of course, whenever we move to uh, proof of stake, whenever the merge happens, the miners on the network right now are going to become validators. And so proof of stake means you take cryptocurrency, you stake it to the network, and you participate in validating transactions and you get a passive income reward for doing this. So let's say like anybody does anything on the blockchain, they send cryptocurrency around, they trade a token on Uniswap, they buy an NFT, they uh, basically include that transaction in the blockchain, the validators are the ones that do that. They stake their crypto, they get paid a passive income reward for doing that. And that part, part of their reward is actually created as new cryptocurrency, the blockchain generates itself, okay? The blockchain just creates cryptocurrency out of thin air and they pay them. And that's part of that makeup of that 10%. It's not the full 10%, it's part of it, okay? So now, the other way people get paid is um, basically, whenever I create that transaction, I pay a fee, all right? And part of that fee goes to the stakers as well. And so all those fees added together, plus the new ETH that's created by the blockchain itself, goes to the stakers. And when you add that up, you know, doing some math, that makes ETH uh, have a passive reward of about, you know, eight to 11 and a half percent. Now that can change depending on how many people stake on the network and how many people use the network, lots of other variables, but you can definitely see some, uh, you know, some numbers in a spreadsheet here that uh, show the different ranges of possible outcomes. But anyway, you slice it, there's gonna be lots of people that are looking at this saying like, hey, this is a huge opportunity to get into this asset, get this high yield and a super quality asset like this, generate huge demand for ETH. And this could be one of the catalysts that you know, in and of itself could easily propel ETH past $10,000 per coin inside of 2022, according to Arthur Hayes. Now let's talk about another big reason why this is insanely bullish for the Ethereum price in of itself is because after the merge for Ethereum, 2.0 that's likely to happen in this year, um, ETH is most likely going to become a deflationary asset. And so if you've got people that are jumping into the ETH space to get chase yield, all right, buy, you know, the top quality asset for the most popular smart contract platform uh, in the entire, you know, blockchain space. And then the economics of the supply actually change where there's less and less and less ETH every year. Uh, that that's going to be absolutely crazy. And so let's talk about the deflationary aspect of it. So basically last year, uh, you know, ETH changed its economics to where it burns ETH anytime new transactions are created. So if you, you know, a second ago when I was explaining how stakers get paid or validators, basically new ETH is created by the blockchain, okay? So new ETH is getting created by the blockchain to pay the validators as the block reward. But then also whenever people are doing transactions, part of the fee that they're paying actually gets burnt. It just gets erased from the network, okay? And so right now, uh, b before we've moved to proof of stake, um, you know, it, basically the, the, the burning of, of ETH right now is just reducing the rate at which new ETH hits the market. Currently, ETH is slightly inflationary, but whenever we move to proof of stake, uh, the amount of new ETH that's created by the blockchain every single block is going to reduce dramatically. You might have heard about ETH triple halving. Well, right now, you know, the inflation rate's about 4% if you don't factor in uh, the fee burning, okay? And that gets going to get cut in half three times, hence triple halving. It goes from 4% to 2%, right? That's one. 2% to 1%, that's two. And then 1% to 0.5%, that's three halvings, okay? And so basically what that's going to do 
you can see it here on this website, ultrasound.money. You can compare, um, you know, the current ETH being issued every single year, about 1 million, uh, or sorry, 5.4 million ETH. Um, let's see here, uh, per year. And then 1 million ETH per year is being burned given the past day activity. You can filter this across one day, seven days, all right? But if you simulate merge, you can actually see um, that just assuming that the network activity stays the same, that ETH is going to become, you know, net deflationary, okay? So minus uh, 9% inflationary or 9% deflationary on an annualized basis. And now the only way this would change is if, you know, after the merge, somehow the network activity decreased to the level where over a long period of time, it's not deflationary anymore. But I really don't see this happening. That's why I say ETH is most likely going to be deflationary after the merge. And of course, this is massively bullish for the Ethereum price because assuming that the demand for ETH asset itself even just stays the same, if there's less ETH every single year, just by sheer supply and demand economics, that's going to make the price of ETH go up. All right, so let's talk about some counter arguments to, you know, this being a bullish catalyst for ETH, you know, the merge for the Ethereum price, all that type of stuff. So there's lots of people that speculate this is going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news situation where basically people are accumulating ETH you know, the cryptocurrency itself ahead of the merge event and then just like dumping ETH whenever the merge happens, okay? And that could be super bearish. Maybe that puts us into a long bear market. And then maybe also you would have basically the, the stakers um, just withdraw all their ETH that have been staked for a really long time and now like, you know, dump that on the market as well. So let's talk about one side of this equation, which is the the sell side pressure from the stakers or validators who've had their ETH locked up for a very long time. So basically right now you can stake ETH. Like I said in the beginning of this video, there's a separate blockchain, the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain, where you can basically take your cryptocurrency that you have now, send it to that blockchain, run a validator, start staking it and earn that passive income reward. So you can do that. The problem is that's you can't get that ETH back right now. It's not liquid. It's not going to become liquid until after the merge. Okay. And and the rewards that you accrued are not going to be liquid till after the merge. So a lot of people think that, hey, once the merge happens, everybody who's like kissed their ETH goodbye for two years is just going to take it back and just instantly sell it. So um, that's probably not going to happen because basically what a lot of people don't know is that after the merge, you can even see this on the ethereum.org website, there's going to be a post-merge cleanup period, okay? So basically, uh, a few features, such as the ability to withdraw staked ETH, will have to wait a little longer after the merge is complete. P plans include a post-merge cleanup upgrade to address these features, which is expected to happen very soon after the merge is completed. We don't exactly know when that's going to happen. So it's not like the merge is just going to turn on, and then all this ETH instantly going to hit the market, and it's going to dump. We have an undetermined amount of time before that ETH actually becomes unlocked before people could take it and dump it. All right, so let's talk about a couple of the FAQs for the Ethereum 2.0 merge um, that's going to happen later this year. Um, so one of the most common questions I get all the time is like, hey, is the merge going to fix Ethereum's gas fees? Like, I can't stand how much it costs to trade tokens on, you know, Uniswap or whatever, right? So the truth is, ETH 2.0 is not going to fix Ethereum's gas fees. It's never advertised that it was going to. It's a really common misconception that that's going to be the upgrade that just changes everything, okay? And so that's another reason people think that ETH 2.0 merge could be bearish because people are going to get on ETH and realize, hey, this didn't fix the gas fees. Like, what happened? I've been rug pulled. So uh, what you have to understand is that the, the answer for Ethereum scaling for basically since I've been in the space has always been to move towards layer two scaling solutions, okay? So basically, what is this? This is creating a second environment on top of Ethereum where you do a lot of the network activity on that environment and that environment actually uses Ethereum security model and in many cases just like batches up all the transactions into a smaller footprint and then like includes those back onto the main Ethereum chain. So you can see these layer two scaling solutions on a website like l2beat.com. These are, you know, gaining quick adoption. Okay, you can see them categorized into like optimistic rollups, zero knowledge rollups. Definitely check out some other videos on my channel where I talk about these in depth, but that's what's going to fix ETH gas fees long term, not Ethereum 2.0 or the merge. All right, so the last big question I want to answer is like, hey, are you going to get free coins whenever the merge happens? Because sometimes people talk about, you know, networks forking and sometimes the networks fork like, you know, you had money on one network and then whenever this new network came out, well, then you've got, you know, new money on that. You just got double money. So this is probably not going to happen in my view. Okay. So 
um, let's let's see what. When the merge happens, we're going to merge a new blockchain into Ethereum 1.0. So there'd be no reason from like the Ethereum upgrade perspective why you know, chains will be splitting. The, you, two chains are going to become one, okay? Now, the counter to that is like, hey, what happens if somebody just like stays back and, you know, mines the old Ethereum chain and doesn't, you know, like we just have miners just stay back and keep this chain on. Well, we have the Ethereum difficulty bomb uh, that's, you know, going to fix that problem. And here's the other thing. Like, let's say you could even circumvent that in some way and then like keep this copy of Ethereum, you know, that's being mined. And then you, everybody was on Ethereum 2.0, but then you have this old network here. Well, there's there's a big problem because a lot of the value from Ethereum comes from its network effect in and of itself. All the applications living on top of it, all the tokens, all the stable coins. So you're going to face a huge problem, which is like, let's say you have a prominent stable coin like USDC or USDT, and then you have this old network and they say you had a bunch of stable coins on the old network. Well, part of the reason that stuff's valuable is because, you know, the issuers decide which network those are valid on. Because in the, the day, anybody could fork the entire Ethereum state and spin up their own blockchain with a centralized, you know, set of nodes in a cluster, right? But what gives it value is that it's it's the the main chain that everybody decides to use. And so for that reason, if for some reason, you know, we had like a, a remnant stay behind to mine the old Ethereum chain, it wouldn't have the same network effect as, you know, uh, the Ethereum 2.0 that everybody plans to move to. And so for that reason, I don't think you're going to get free coins after the merge happens. All right, so that's everything you need to know about the Ethereum 2.0 merge that's going to come up later this year. So I hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. If you like those videos and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.